In today's episode of African Biographics, we'll look at Mobutu Sese Seko, who was the president of the now Democratic Republic of Congo for 32 years. He is one chapter of the story of the DRC that has stories of atrocities done by King Leopold of Belgium, the assassination of Patrice Lumumba. Mobutu was the one who once changed the name of his country from Congo to Zaire in his cultural revolution to Africanize names of important institutions. Like a number of first-generation African leaders, such as Jean Bordeaux Bokassa, the army made Mobutu. He was one of the orchestrators of the coup against Patrice Lumumba while working with the CIA and the Belgians. Mobutu rose to power in 1965 after a coup d'etat. During his time in power, Mobutu amassed wealth that is estimated to be over $4 billion. He was deposed from office when rebel forces led by Laurent Kabila expelled him from the country. In this video, we look at the life and legacy of Mobutu Sese Seko alongside the complicated story of the DRC. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe as well as to click the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new uploads that come out every Monday and Friday. Mobutu was born in 1930 in Lisala, Belgian Congo. His father was a cook who died when Mobutu was a child and his mother was a maid in a hotel. She used her earnings to send Mobutu to a Catholic boarding school for his education. In 1949, he joined the Force Publique, an internal security force of Congolese troops but with Belgian officers. He rose to Sergeant Major, the highest rank open to Africans. He stayed there for seven years, leaving to become a newspaper reporter. It was in that position that he met Congolese nationalist leader Patrice Lumumba. Mobutu was so impressed by Lumumba that he joined Lumumba's political party, the Congolese National Movement. In 1960, Mobutu represented Lumumba at the Brussels Round Table Conference on Congo Independence until the release of Lumumba, who had been jailed for his nationalist activities in the Congo. He and Lumumba became really close allies. When the Congo became independent on the 30th of June 1960, a coalition government led the country with Lumumba as the Prime Minister and Joseph Kasafubu as the President. Mobutu was appointed the Army Chief of Staff. A few months later, Lumumba and Kasafubu would clash in a struggle for political supremacy. On the 14th of September 1960, a military coup overthrew Lumumba and installed Kasafubu as the overall leader. One of the key figures in the coup was none other than Lumumba's old ally, Mobutu. Many believe that Mobutu is responsible for the death of Patrice Lumumba. This coup was conducted with the support of both the American CIA and the Belgian government. Both of these entities didn't trust Lumumba, who they thought to be a communist or at least pro-communist. This is why they wanted Kasavubu and Mobutu in power, as they believed correctly that these two would be more pliable. After the coup, Mobutu was made the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. As the commander-in-chief, Mobutu reorganized the army. In 1965, after a power struggle had developed between President Kasavubu and his premier, Moise Chombe, Mobutu removed Kasavubu in a coup and assumed the presidency. Upon taking power, Mobutu banned all political parties and declared the equivalent of a state of emergency taking on almost dictatorial powers. He later formed his own party, the Popular Movement of the Revolution, which all the Congolese people were obliged to join. In 1970, Mobutu held an election in which he was the only candidate and in which voting was mandatory. Unsurprisingly, he got 99% of the vote. The following year, in 1971, he began a program of cultural awareness and renamed the country the Republic of Zaire. Colonial names were Africanized and a new flag and national anthem were adopted. Individuals were required to adopt African names in place of their Christian or other foreign names. Mobutu adopted his ancestral name, Mobutu Sese Seko Mkunku Wazabanga, which translates to O Conquering Warrior Who Goes From Triumph to Triumph. During his time in power, Mobutu was subject to one of the most pervasive cult of personalities ever. His portraits were hung in many public places and government officials wore lapel pins bearing his portrait. His picture appeared everywhere and on everything, from postage stamps to the country's paper currency. At one point, in early 1975, the media were forbidden to refer to anyone other than Mobutu by their name. Others were referred to only by the positions they held. 
One side note or fun fact about Mobutu, he was the one who was instrumental in bringing the rumble in the jungle boxing match between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman to Zaire on 30 October 1974. One sad theme that we're starting to see here on African Biographics is that most of these leaders spend most of their time increasing their personal fortune instead of bettering their countries. And unfortunately, Mobutu is not an exception. By 1984, his personal wealth was estimated to be equivalent to 5 billion US dollars and he held most of it outside of the country. His personal wealth was also the equivalent to the country's foreign debt at the time. As Mobutu and his family and friends were looting the country for years almost non-stop, the treasury simply ran out of money. This situation resulted in most roads, bridges and other elements of the country's infrastructure to literally fall apart because there was no money to maintain them. Meanwhile, Mobutu owned a fleet of Mercedes-Benz vehicles that he used to travel between his numerous palaces. Most of the money was siphoned off to Mobutu and his family and top political and military leaders. Most government workers were paid sporadically, if at all, resulting in tremendous inflation and a level of corruption that was mind-boggling, even for Africa. His regime had led to success in establishing the conditions needed for economic growth and development in a country that is incredibly rich in natural resources. What made Mobutu to survive, even though he was facing economic collapse, was that he had some really strong friends and allies, and one of them being the United States. With US funds, Mobutu just managed to hold his country together. The collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989 and the end of the Cold War did not bode well for Mobutu. He had always been able to count on support by Western governments no matter how much they disliked his domestic policies. Because of the Congo's huge size, vast mineral wealth and strategic location, he was able to paint himself as a bulwark against the communist menace in Africa. And the fact that this country held vast untapped reserves of gold, silver, diamonds, timber didn't hurt either. However, now that the Soviet Union no longer existed, Mobutu's claim to be an anti-communist bastion in the heart of Africa was irrelevant. Under much pressure from Western governments and because of economic problems and internal disturbances, Mobutu ended the ban on political parties and brought opposition figures into the government, but he still connived to retain control of the security services and important ministries. When the Rwandan genocide was happening in April of 1994, Mobutu sought to use the arrival of Rwandan Hutu refugees in his country as an opportunity for him to be seen as a humanitarian. Yet Mobutu's strategy collapsed in the face of Rwandan opposition to his hosting of Hutu refugees on his country's eastern border. Rwandan President Paul Kagame began to plan an invasion of the eastern Congo where the Hutu rebels were located. Kagame used Mobutu's longtime opponent, Laurent Kabila, to front a movement to dethrone Mobutu. On the 24th of October 1996, these forces began a campaign to capture the Congo. On 19 April the following year, they captured Lubumbashi. It was only a matter of time until Kinshasa fell. On the 16th of May 1997, Following failed peace talks with Kabila and the President of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, who chaired the talks, Mobutu fled into exile. Laurent Kabila's forces declared victory the next day. Initially, Mobutu fled to neighboring Togo and then to Morocco, where he took permanent residence. That same year, he died from prostate cancer while he was in Morocco. Mobutu left behind a legacy of chaos and corruption in the DRC, and that reality has since continued in that country. Hopefully this country will stabilize one day because it is indeed a sleeping giant. This has been today's episode of African Biographics. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and share the video. This has been Tatenda. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.